and welcome to this tutorial. If you've been curious about immersive audio and have been wondering what it's like to mix in Dolby Atmos, if the process is easy or complex, or what it would take to mix your next project in Dolby Atmos and how you can get started, well, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to discuss the basics and the first steps you'll need to take to create a Dolby Atmos mix using any DAW. Now, if there's one big takeaway for this video, it's this. You don't need to change your existing setup at all to start creating wonderful immersive content in Dolby Atmos. You can do it right now, and it's not as difficult as it might seem. It's a little different, but it's not hard. Keep in mind that we publish mixing tips on a regular basis to give you more creative inspiration. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of the tips. Let's dive in. Note that we'll use the Dolby Atmos Composer Essential plugin throughout this video since, as the name suggests, it contains all the essential tools you need to create Dolby Atmos content. Keep in mind that Dolby Atmos must be produced with a sample rate of either 48 kHz or 96 kHz. The full version of Dolby Atmos Composer supports both sample rates, while Dolby Atmos Composer Essential only works at 48 kHz. If you have an existing session at a different sample rate, you'll need to convert your session to one of these two supported rates. Okay, so with the basic setup out of the way, let's get to work. We start by putting a Dolby Atmos Composer Essential plugin on the master channel. Now, if we just hit play, we're not going to hear anything, and that's okay, because the Composer plugin receives its inputs in a different way compared to most other plugins. To send signals to the Composer plugin, we'll need to use another plugin called Dolby Atmos Beam. Beam is installed along with Dolby Atmos Composer and Composer Essential. What Beam does is that it, well, beams audio from anywhere in your session to the Composer plugin. To use it, just insert a Beam plugin on any channel that you want to bring into your Atmos mix, and its sound is routed to the Composer. The reason why our plugins work like this is so that you can work with 3D audio on any DAW, even if that DAW does not natively support immersive mixing at all. As you can see in the Composer window, there are 128 channels in the Input Channels section. This means that Atmos can accommodate up to 128 channels in a mix. Those channels can come from any point in your session, basically wherever you have placed a Beam plugin. Each of these channels can have its own position in space, and you can decide where to place those channels. As soon as a Beam plugin is instantiated on a track, it is automatically recognized by the Composer plugin. You'll notice that some of the input channels in Composer are automatically allocated when a Beam plugin is instantiated. These channels with the orange border are called bed in Dolby Atmos terminology, but we call it composite in our plugins. This is basically a virtual speaker layout where your sounds can be placed and panned using the Beam plugin. More about panning in a minute. If you're wondering why we call it a composite instead of a bed, it's because Dolby Atmos beds have to have specific standardized layouts, whereas our composites aren't limited to just those standard options. With our system, you can go beyond. In our case, the composite selector in the input channel section says 7.1.2, which happens to be the standard bed format for Dolby Atmos. We're free to choose other layouts, but let's leave that as is for now. 7.1.2 means that we have seven speakers around us from side to side, one LFE channel, which is usually a subwoofer, and two height speakers positioned above us. Now, if you happen to have an immersive multi-channel speaker set up in your studio, the virtual speakers of the composite will be output to your actual speakers. The good news is that even if you do not have all the immersive speakers positioned all over your room, you can still listen to your mixes in 3D by using headphones. This is done through a playback method called binaural audio, and it lets you hear your mix as if there were speakers positioned all over your room. We see the dream to many others You picked your battles wrong I'm not the one you should be after Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you I've pulled you through with all that I could do But I'm not here to lick your wounds Or to solve your issues If you want, you can choose 
So to recap, we instantiated the Composer plugin on the master channel, which will act like the master channel for Dolby Atmos. Next, we instantiated Beam plugins on the channels we want to have in our Atmos mix. Those Beam plugins were immediately recognized by the Composer plugin and automatically routed to the composite. That means we have our basic routing done, and now we can get creative. The Beam plugin not only sends our tracks to the Composer, but is also a versatile panning plugin. Beam lets you position each track in three-dimensional space just like a pan knob lets you position a sound in a stereo field. The input channels appear in the panning window at the right as objects in space. In the 3D panner, you can rotate the view by right-clicking and dragging with your mouse. If you're working on a laptop and don't have a mouse handy, you can hold Command while dragging on a Mac or Control while dragging in Windows. Now, let's select our objects and position them where we want. To help you get oriented, we have the virtual speakers of the composite positioned in the panning window. You can place sounds at any of these positions, or you can position them anywhere in between the speakers. We use the be a team, we seem to dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why well, feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a woo with all that I could do, but. I'm not here to lick your wounds or to solve your issues. If you want, you can choose. I can't take you down. I can't take you down if I wanna. I can't take you down. I can't And keep in mind that you can do this with mono tracks, stereo tracks, or any other format with up to 16 channels. In the next step, you can bring in the returns of your send effects as separate signals. This is done by placing beam plugins after the effect in your send bus. This way you can pan the effects to different positions from the other tracks, giving you immense creative freedom in your mixes. Let's do that with our reverb. And we can take things even further. By this I mean you can automate the position of those objects to create movement. You can do this by dragging the objects around in the panner while recording the automation in your DAW. to be a team we see the dream to many others you picked your battles wrong i'm not the one you should be after why well, feel superior to someone who has been there for you i've pulled you through a with all that i could do but now you might be asking why do we only have 10 channels used if there are 128 channels available in dolby atmos well, currently all incoming beams are placed and panned around on the composite channels. However, you can also decide that you want some of the beams as completely separate channels that aren't part of the bed. These channels are called dynamic objects in Dolby Atmos terminology. Clicking on the objects button in a beam plugin converts it into 
an object, and extra channels are reserved for it inside the composer. When you do this, the Beam plugin is no longer sent to the composite and gets to have its own channels. The panning of these objects in Beam is now rendered in the composer separately. Dynamic objects can be freely positioned in space, even at positions that are not covered by the virtual speakers of the composite. So this is how you might find yourself using up to 128 channels. The composite forms the base channel count while the dynamic objects fill up the rest of the available channels. So let's have another recap about what we have just achieved. After instantiating the Dolby Atmos Composer on the master channel and adding beam plugins on the tracks we want in our Atmos mix, we use the panning function found inside each beam plugin to position our tracks in three-dimensional space. We also sent the return signal of a reverb send effect to the composer using its own beam plugin. And we panned the sounds to the position we wanted. We then created some movement by recording the panning automation in our DAW. And finally, we switched one of our beam plugins to object mode so we can treat its channels as separate dynamic objects. Once you're happy with your Atmos mix, it's time to export. The file that comes out of Dolby Atmos Composer will be in ADM BWF format. This format contains all the Atmos channels plus the information about the channel's position in space, including all automation. We just have to set the in point where we want to start the export process and the out point where we want it to end. So make sure that the ADM BWF button is switched on and click the export button. And finally, select a location and file name. Now, there are two ways to perform the actual export. We can use the export or bounce function of the DAW on the region we selected with the in point and out point, or we can just hit play before the in point and let it play through. Let's do that here. We see the dreams of many others You picked your battles wrong I'm not the one you should be after Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you I've pulled you through a room with all that I could do But I'm not here to lick your wounds or to solve your issues If you want, you can choose I can't take you down, I can't take you down once the export is finished, we get a success message. You now have a Dolby Atmos file, which can then be delivered to customers or streaming services like Apple Music, Amazon Music, Tidal, Netflix, and so forth. If you look for the exported file, you might notice that it has a .wav ending, just like normal WAV files. This is normal for ADM BWF files. If you want, you can send this file off to distributors. Alternatively, if you don't have a fancy multi-channel speaker set up in your studio but know somebody that does, you can go to that studio and listen to your mix there without having to take the whole session with you. All you need is that export file. However, if you do decide to take your session to the studio with the fancy speaker system, for example, if you take your laptop where you originally made the mix, it's very easy to set up your computer to play back through whatever audio interface is available at that studio. This is done by using a neat feature of Dolby Atmos Composer that lets you monitor directly through any audio interface that you have connected to your computer. Just select the multi-channel device in the drop-down menu called External Output and select the rendering format you want to use for monitoring. That way, you can listen to your mix on a multi-channel speaker system even if your DAW does not natively support any multi-channel layout. So as we wrap things up, let me give you two more pieces of Sage advice. First, if you're creating a Dolby Atmos production from scratch and you're not adapting an existing mix, try to think of your mix in three dimensions right from the start, as in try to create a three-dimensional concept and have an idea of how you want the sound to envelop you. Remember that you have all the spatial freedom in the world, so don't be afraid to experiment with new recording and mixing techniques. With 3D audio, you actually have a lot more space than a stereo mix, so you don't have to worry about sounds clashing in the frequency spectrum or stepping on top of each other. And that space isn't just technical in nature, there's more space for creativity too. So again, don't be afraid to explore. 
Second, keep in mind that Dolby Atmos music productions will be heard on headphones 99% of the time because most people don't own sophisticated multi-channel speaker setups. Although it's tempting to do all your mixing on speakers, your primary goal should be to create a headphone mix which stands out compared to the stereo version of the mix. So don't think that with only headphones at your disposal, you won't be able to achieve something great. Quite the contrary, headphones should actually be the main way that you monitor your mix. Anyway, I hope you like this tutorial and that it's been helpful in getting you started with Dolby Atmos. If it has, please give this video a thumbs up and check out the other in-depth tutorials for learning more about Dolby Atmos Composer. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to stay up to date on the latest news, tips, and updates. There's a lot more to come, so I'll see you in the next one.